Aimlisted Oracle Power is a power development company in Pakistan with interest in coal and hydrogen, but it also has two gold licenses in Australia. The chief executive is Nahid Mamon. She joins us now from Dubai. It's good to be able to catch up with you. Thanks indeed for your time. I've known Oracle Power for many, many years. And of course, we have now got this new development uh, with the, uh, the hydrogen business. I want to take a look at the business of hydrogen specifically in just a minute. But first of all, I'd like your idea as to what it is uh, you're doing as a, a, a group a group company uh, and, and what you're offering to investors in, in Oracle Power. Right. Hi, Jeremy, and thank you for this. Um, so we are, I guess, now at um, on both sides of the spectrum. So whereas we have an interest and we continue to develop what has now become a very important global commodity, which is coal, given the shortage of, um, of energy globally, and uh, with, with the world now trying to see how they can um, manage um, coal, as well as follow up with their um, net zero goals. So we still have the coal asset and we still continue to develop that, but we are sort of looking at more responsible ways to develop that. And uh, we have now gone into the development of what we believe is going to be the global fuel for the future, and that is green hydrogen. Um, and, um, you know, the demand for hydrogen as a fuel will only increase as the the industry develops and the market starts to recognize how it is meant to um, to sort of accommodate this alongside with its, um, I would say, fuels of the past, which are all your fossil fuels, etc. And whereas we recognize that there can't just be a switch on and off, there is clearly a transition. And Oracle is a company which has recognized um, that transition. And we are um, sort of, uh, you know, uh, working in accordance with what we feel that there will be a global transition from what is a fuel uh, of yesterday and then the fuel for the future. So the green hydrogen is something that we are very, very, I would say, bullish on. And um, we believe that we will be able to set this up and become a global supplier. Well, let, let's 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 go back and take a look at the genesis of this whole idea about going into hydrogen, because you had this joint venture, I think, what the back end of last year, didn't you, with uh, with Power China uh, to develop Pakistan's first green hydrogen production facility. And then recently you've got this deal with Tyson Krupp to make it a reality, uh, which I guess is brings the, the whole story on in, in a great leap. Uh, explain what you're trying to achieve out of this and how you see it developing into uh, a good power source in Pakistan. Of course. Um, so Power China has been in Pakistan for you know many decades. And um, roughly speaking, if there's one gigawatt of renewable power which has been commissioned, most of that has been um, set up, constructed, and sort of they, it has been contracted out to Power China. So Power China understands the renewable power space, the hybrid power um, generation space, etc. So, um, and that is where Power China came in. And because they understood this space, we sort of um, put this concept, this idea together, and they're the ones who actually did the initial planning, the concept, and and the whole sort of pre-feasibility, so to speak. Uh, with respect to making the project viable. Um, the way that we, um, the way the sort of the world has understood and what has now become the norm is to actually convert the hydrogen, green hydrogen, into what is called green ammonia, which is the most easily transported molecule coming out of green hydrogen. And it is also used worldwide, etc. And all the big players in this space are converting hydrogen into green ammonia tracking it across long distances, and then either using it as green ammonia or converting it back into hydrogen. Now, the biggest company out there, I would say one of the biggest companies out there, which understands this technology, has this technology to actually synthesize and then crack and make it available for users is ThyssenKrupp. So whereas Power China has an absolutely you know, fantastic understanding of hybrid power generation, but uh, the other part of it, which is using that renewable power as feedstock and putting it into the hydrogen machinery, if I can just call it that, that's where Thyssen Group comes in. And they understand that part of this um, development really well. Um, and, you know, we are extremely, I think, um, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's very good that we managed to get them on board. Um, and I'll quote, like the CEO yesterday said to me that, A, we get a thousand offers every day. We reject most of them because we don't pick up projects just like that. They are extremely 
um, busy with a lot of interest in hydrogen as a commodity and a lot of um, potential developers coming um, on board. So the fact that they took us on, number one, and number two, they never leave a project. So this is also what he said to me. So we're really grateful that they're on with us. And beyond the study, I think we would look to them for um, putting it all down on ground. So just just to clarify, the relationship you've now got with Tyson Krupp is to do what? To get you up to speed and then let you get on with it? Or are they going to be managing this for you? Right. So um, at this point in time, they're going to do the green hydrogen and green ammonia bankable feasibility commercial technical studies for us, which in itself is quite an exercise because um, this has to be put together in a way that we can actually achieve financial close. So Thyssen Group comes in at that point in time. Having said that, when it comes to the actual construction and equipment, Thyssen Group would obviously be a front runner in that as well. And then there would have to be a sort of a marriage, so to speak, between the hybrid power generation and the hydrogen bit. So all of that, I think Thyssen Group would also play a very big role in that as well. But it's early days. Um, and clearly, we have established a relationship. And I think it could only get bigger now. So now all this clearly costs money. And I know um, mm -hmm. when, when a company is, is, is pre-revenue, it's very difficult to discuss this. But we have to look at this and work out precisely what's happening. What's the strength of the balance sheet at the moment like? Uh, how much cash have you got? What's the cash burn? What are you going to propose in terms of trying to find ways of paying for all this? Right. So if you're going to be um, talking about the green hydrogen, so green hydrogen is being developed in a joint venture um, arrangement with uh, His Highness. Um, Sheikh Ahmed um, and he has uh, put down um, sort of 70% uh, of the development cost up to now, which includes everything, whatever we are doing and going forward, this is how it's going to be funded. And um, he's very comfortable taking the lion's share and um, he is keen to become a player in this hydrogen ecosystem. So it's a risk that he's taking. And I think he is a, it's a measured risk because he sits in the UAE, which is now a very, very uh, alert and aware of the importance of, uh, of developing alternative fuels and greener sustainable energy. Um, COP28 is going to be in the UAE. So there's a lot of interest coming from this region and he's sitting in the middle of that. Um, we have Oracle Power, the listed entity has 30% of the share for this joint venture agreement, which actually has really mitigated our risk and also places, uh, I would say, minimal burden on our cash um, towards this project. So we are super comfortable. And um, although it's early days, we're already in conversation with, um, with potential financiers coming from you know, the lender space who also then come in and they invest. Uh, donor financiers, etc. And because this is a project which everyone um, is aligned with, we are very confident that we will soon, very soon have a definite interest coming in from one of those um, players, global players like that as well, to mitigate the overall risk. So at this point in time, this is a project that we are extremely fortunate to be able to develop, given that we are not actually spending a lot of our own money. Um, and yet we are in management control and yet we are going to hopefully get the credit for being able to get a project which is so important. And we are a large project. We have 400 megawatt electrolyzer, electrolyzer capacity, which is roughly speaking a quarter of the size of NEOM, which is probably the largest project in the world for green hydrogen. So to put such a large project down without really burning oneself is is a huge opportunity and one can only be grateful to his highness for actually um putting his trust in us and also putting down his money yeah is this the only one of its type at the moment in pakistan of course yeah certainly in fact it's the largest project in the region um there are bigger there are projects coming up in oman and um, in india has some smaller projects etc but um it's hard to develop a large project like this because the ingredients are very peculiar. So you need land close to the port and you need hybrid resource. So this project is located in, uh, in the wind corridor and this is a massive wind corridor. It has an annual generation capacity um, in excess of um, 40,000 megawatts, which is a big sort of resource, wind resource. And then coupling that with solar. Um, so we've got cheap renewable resource We've got a large piece of land and then the port. And that's why this becomes, uh, you know, 
uh, a sort of a possibility. Uh, in the absence of any one of these, uh, this would not be viable. Mm. Just want to go back to the point you made at the top and discussing the hydrogen against the the, the lignite coal uh, field mm -hmm. that you had been developing at uh, at Oracle Power. How important is the Thar coal field now, which was originally developed to provide lignite coal, which would drive power stations? And of course, this is now off the agenda for many um, around the world. So how are you approaching this? Is it a long term plan to shed this asset or are you going to engage further with it now having done all this work? On the contrary. So um, the province in which this is located has, as of now, I think last week or maybe last month, commissioned a railway line, which is going to transport lignite coal up country. And our coal from our mine and our project sits, still sits in CPEC. So we obviously have the financing capacity and ability. The only issue which has now come up is that people find burning coal for power, new coal for power, slightly problematic. Having said that, Pakistan faces a huge balance of payment crisis. They cannot import LNG, which they're in. And they, I mean, there's an energy crisis globally now. And with the war, of course, that's been, you know, like um, it's become even a bigger problem. So Pakistan is in a similar problem, similar problem and even worse because we don't have the money to import fuel, um, imported coal or imported gas LNG. So there is no way that we will abandon this or the government in fact will allow us to abandon this coal because they need it. They need it to actually to use it for power plants, which are already there, use it for other industry uh, because we are importing Indonesian coal at $300, $400. And, and you know, that is, that, that's the rate the coal's gone for now. So, and the people who are mining already, their sort of first few years coal was coming out at $60 and everyone was screaming and shouting, oh my God, how is that? But now $60 suddenly seems almost free. So I don't see this being shut down at all. In fact, I see more of an urgency to develop it. We are now currently working with the government and with other partners to actually create a model which mitigates any issues that come up with coal burning for power, et cetera, and also try and use it in a way which is more responsible and more directly applicable. That railway line that I'm talking about directly is based on the development of our mine and as well as the expansion of the mines that have already been opened. So that's a huge project that the government is undertaking only because there is no way that the government will let go of this resource. Um, and, and we all understand that there is going to be a transition, but there isn't going to be a switch off. So this is not going anywhere. We are working on a way to actually open up the mine. Just wanted to finish off as well in terms of the question and take into the point I made at the top about the fact that you've also got two gold licenses in Australia. Um, mm -hmm. what's, the, um, what's the purpose of this? Because it seems like as a power company, engaging with another different, completely different type of commodity wouldn't seem to fit with your strategy. What's, what's the point um, of this? Right. So, um, I mean, we, we sort of work in the natural resources sort of uh, space and mining and natural resource. And these were acquired in 2020. And this was the first acquisition that the company made um, stepping out of coal. And 2020 was when COVID hit and it was an opportunity acquisition. We got it very cheap and it was it had a lot of potential and it still does. At least one of the um, um, uh, tenements that we have has established it and the other one, there is some work going on on that as we speak. So we felt that this would be a huge way to diversify, a good way to diversify our portfolio. And uh, it was a great opportunity. And now we are very close to actually getting some benefit from that um, that acquisition that we had made at that time. Whether we will continue to do more gold, et cetera, well, it depends upon the opportunity and the price at which we get assets. We are always alert to good opportunities and jurisdictions where we feel we are able to operate. Australia was a very safe jurisdiction. And during COVID, it was, uh, you know, it was easy to achieve because our coal assets had somehow the development had slowed down. And as a company, we felt that we must mitigate the risk for our investors. Mm. Uh, talking about risk for investors, just wanted to quickly um, bring up the share price chart. I know you know the, the direction of travel on this. Uh, as I said, you're yes. an AIM listed business. Um, 
it is only a, a penny stock. What do you what, what's been priced in at this level? What what do you think investors are concerned about when driving shares down as far as they've gone down? Um, I I believe that um there there is a there is a sort of a signaling issue here. So if, if someone comes into Oracle, they are thinking, are we going for a project which is a green hydrogen producer, or are we going into a into a company which is still producing coal, etc. So I believe that whilst we have two or three projects in the pipeline, investors may not see the value that any one of these will actually deliver. So there seems to be a bit of a signaling issue. That's the way I look at it. And therefore, the value proposition is perhaps not being communicated as effectively. So we understand that and we recognize that. But I know that each one of the projects that we're on, and especially the green hydrogen, I think um, the potential is massive. It's huge and can be delivered very soon. But the coal project, as soon as we have that crossing a line, um, I think that the value um, signal will suddenly sort of become much clearer to um, to investors who are, I guess, um, who came in for coal perhaps, but now they are sitting in a company which has become an international project developer. So that's not just one project, there are two or three projects in the pipeline. As soon as one or two get across the line, I think that the market will recognize um, the sort of the value overall as well. Um, yeah. So I think it's absolutely undervalued at this point in time. Uh, in the spirit of signaling, uh, what's to come mm-hmm. to start in, in your mind in terms of milestones to start to crystallize value for shareholders that have hung on in? Of course. So um, for the green hydrogen, we'll be on ground very soon. That is going to be, I mean, I think absolutely fantastic to actually start um, putting our feet on the ground and, um, you know, in terms of the actual um, development process. So that's going to be one big thing because we will then become an actual on ground, you know, in the development phase of one of the biggest green hydrogen projects in the region, as well as an important project globally. That's one. Uh, and that's going to happen, you know, um, that that's all in the pipeline. And we're working very hard to sort of get across that as soon as possible. Um, so actually putting ourselves on ground, getting all our players together, the nexus of developers and moving with that forward. Um, and then that starts to deliver the returns because then it's not too far off. Once we are on ground, all the milestones then start clocking in. Um, and then on the coal front, as I said, we are working on the development of the mine in a way which makes sense, which is reasonable and appropriate, and also looking to develop that entire mining area. That's also on the cards, and hopefully we will get that across the line as well soon. Uh, that's also not too far away. There is a lot of development going on um, you know, behind the doors, and it's not something which is silent because it has really now become um, an issue. In Pakistan, for us, generally, that resource needs to be developed. Uh, in in an appropriate fashion and quickly. And then, of course, in our gold space, we are in conversation with other companies for partnerships. And very soon, I think that would also be a milestone that the investors and people who have you know, taken a chance on us would benefit from. We look, we look forward to more developments as and when, but in the meantime, I know you're a very busy person with lots on your plate. So uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you again sometime, perhaps maybe early in the new year. But uh, thanks for your time. That would be very good. And thank you very much for your time as well. Thank you. That's Nahid Mamon, the Chief Executive of Oracle Power.